Okay, so we're here today to talk about brainstorming, which is one of those very commonly used participatory techniques that we've been talking about. Um, if you want to know more information about it, you can ask me and I can give you a copy of this book that I wrote. But the purpose of brainstorming is something that we want to explore today. And so I thought what we would do would be to demonstrate a brainstorm by conducting a brainstorm. And the reasons why we do brainstorms would be the content of the brainstorm. So first we have the focus question, which is, why brainstorm? I know that you've all participated in a brainstorm in the past, so I guess I should just ask you the question. What's the purpose of a brainstorm? Why do we brainstorm? Any and all ideas are welcome. Just to get out a bunch of ideas. Get out a bunch of ideas. I think to also generate creative new ideas. Generate creative and new ideas. Thinking outside of the box a little bit. Okay. What else? Anything else? Well, sometimes brainstorms tend to can be a waste of time. They can be a waste of time. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Why do you say that, T? Uh, well, just sometimes you get a group of people together and you have a brainstorm, but then none of the ideas are used or none of the suggestions are used. And so it just ends up being a waste of time and everyone doesn't like that. Okay, all right. Anything else? Maybe to find out if people are on the same page and what experiences or perspectives they have. Okay, so find out people's perspectives and experience on the topic. I think also it's a good way just to get a record of what people are thinking about. You could use it, kind of refer to it later. And I also have found it to be pretty motivating and energizing. Okay. Both to be asked to participate in one and the actual, you know, participating in one can just be a little bit more exciting than just sitting and having a dull chat. <laughs> okay. And also, I mean, with with that, you it's just a great way to just stimulate discussion around okay. anything that you're thinking about or us trying to find a solution to something. Right. It's just a great way to get everybody's perspectives and have a discussion around it. Okay. So, and is there anything else anybody would like to add? I think we've talked about this before, but it's, it is kind of a confidence builder. I think, and gets people who might be a little bit shy speaking in snippets comfortably okay. and having their ideas heard. Okay. So it is a good way in your way of thinking to help people build confidence. Okay. Anything else? All right. So. We can see here that there are many different reasons why you would want to brainstorm. You would want to brainstorm to get out these ideas that you're talking about, um, to stimulate discussions, to generate creative and new ideas, um, to find out, oftentimes brainstorms are used to find out what people's perspectives or experiences are on a, on a particular topic. Certainly, you would use it because you do want to motivate and energize people to participate so that they can then build confidence in that they're going to, their perspectives are going to be respected and used. Um, in terms of wasting time, I think that's a very good segue to the four cardinal rules of brainstorming which to my way of thinking include things like having a clear objective for why you're going to brainstorm. If your brainstorm is to find out what people's ideas are, it could, your objective could be to stimulate discussion, it could be to, to generate creative and new ideas, it could be to find out what people already know about a topic. So 
one thing you have to do before starting a brainstorm is be very clear about what your objective for using this t technique is. Another is obviously have your very clear uh, focus question. Why brainstorm was ours, but it could be anything else that you wanted to stimulate discussion or create um, new ideas about. Analyze responses only when everyone is finished. What's that mean to you? Analyze responses only when everybody is finished. Um, it seems like if uh, if you stop to go delve into one one person's idea, that kind of takes time away from the whole process of the brainstorm, which is to get a lot of different perspectives in a certain amount of time. So, when you stop to analyze and go into one of those, it just takes time away from right. from other things. Right. It takes time away, and it also, if you start critiquing in the middle of this creativity, then it clamps down creativity, and it can create resistance between you, the facilitator, and the participants, and you don't want resistance. You want everybody moving together, forward together. It could also maybe falsely, not falsely, but inadvertently lead your participants in a particular direction. Mm -hmm. If you're too encouraging of one response and maybe not so encouraging of another. That's a good point. So they may think, oh, I should go this way with this. Right, that's a very good point. And then this last point here, I think, comes back to the point about a waste of time using the information that you gather. If you're doing a brainstorm and you're not using this, the results of your brainstorm somehow, then people may well think that it's a waste of time. It may again create resistance. It may again feel like you're not respecting their ideas. And so, again, be very clear about why you're doing it and be very clear about what, what the focus question is and know how you're going to use the information at the end of the brainstorm. And that will help you have very productive brainstorming sessions. Thank you.